basically what's happening now is that power is passing from the ground, which controls everything now, to the Vega onboard computers, which will control everything after liftoff. Under two minutes to go. Now, I know you're going to go outside and watch the launch. Before you go, just tell me what's going through your mind right now after all these years on the project. I'm feeling quite emotional at the moment, and I don't know what the, how I will react when I see it really going up. But uh, it's such a long program, and uh, let's let's see it going up. All right. Well, we'll get your reaction when you come back. Martin's going to go outside. You see the other people uh, here in the hall going out on the two terraces on either side of the building here. Vega, you get a good shot of uh, the launch pad, and they will see Vega rising up and going toward the north. Martin is going to be out there. He'll be back. Don't know when, maybe after the separation of the first stage, maybe a little later. And we'll get his live reaction and his emotional reaction. DDO is going to announce the one minute mark now. Top H0 moins une minute. So we are into the final 60 seconds. Give us a chance to say hello to all our friends at Airbus Defense and Space in Les Mureaux back in uh, France, at ESA headquarters in Paris, Estec and Isak and Esrin, all of our industrial partners as well, as we look at the spectators gearing up for the liftoff. To all of you watching on the internet, also we all hope you're enjoying the evening. We're going to cut away and let you enjoy the liftoff. You will hear the DDO call out the final 10 seconds and we'll be underway. Enjoy the liftoff, everyone. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage P80 et décollage VV12 Aeolus. Propulsion est nominale. La trajectoire est nominale, la propulsion du P80 est nominale. The DDO says all is fine on board. You saw Vega take off like a shot. I'm always amazed. It took her about three seconds to cross uh, my computer screen here. Three seconds, rising like an arrow. Surprisingly fast if you're used to watching the Ariane 5 lift off. Ariane 5, of course, raises, raises into the air much more slowly, weighs uh, six times what Vega does, carrying four times as much propellant. Fine shots of her rising into the light clouds. All is well on board, says the DDO. Vega weighing 138 tons at liftoff as she lifts off from French Guiana, beginning the 12th mission in her career. They call her the light launcher at 138 tons, but I guess that's relative. The first stage is burning now. She weighs 97 tons. 88 tons of that are fuel. Most of any launcher's weight is propellant in any system that we're using today. The first stage burns its single engine for about two minutes before being jettisoned. Maybe we'll be able to see that as our camera is tracking Vega, because visibility is pretty good. First stage is produced in Colifero near Rome then delivered to the French Guiana plant here, where it's loaded with fuel and transferred to the booster integration building. You probably saw some of that on the video on the launcher campaign. And having returned with a big smile on his face, before separation is Martin Casper. So, oh, how is it? Incredible. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> you, you see it, you feel it, and all the emotion that comes loose. I, oh, it's great. <laughs> you're, you're laughing. Did no, you, no it, it's not laughter. <laughs> yes, it's laughter, but also cry. Did, uh, you, did you cry? Did, did you shed a tear? I did shed a tear. That's great. What, what, uh, what uh, impressed you the most? The sound, the speed, the light, what? The, the, the light was so bright, I had not expected that from such a small launcher. Mm. I saw the Galileo uh, or the, the, the Ariane launch, but yeah. this was much brighter than I had expected. It's like Times Square out, out there, you can read a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Come down and watch a launch, folks, if you haven't already. P-80, first stage separation has come on time. The, f the second stage uh, is burning. We're into the second stage uh, burn called uh, second stage, the Z-23, Z for Zephyro. 
burns its solid rocket motor for 86 seconds. Avio, of course, responsible for production, integration, and testing of both second and third stages. Vega's launching north, going into a sun-synchronous orbit. Why do we need that sort of an orbit? We need it for uh, Aeolus, for the, for the instrument for Aladdin. Uh, we want to have a disk to dawn orbit, so that we're always fed in the sunlight. And uh, it's also the best way to measure the wind profile. And the orbit is called, uh, they have a name for it, it's a uh, ball of yarn orbit, right? Explain that to us. It is basically, you go uh, north to south pole while the Earth is rotating underneath of you. And in this way, you peel off uh, the Earth completely. You saw separation of the second stage. We're waiting for confirmation by the DDO of the third stage, ignition of the third stage. Allumage and there you are, neuf. right on time. And Et coming up next, coiffe. separation of the fairing. Nominal. All right on time. We can separate the fairing now because we've made it out of the atmosphere. Now, exposed to the elements, the right, on the right, the uh, round white section, that's your baby. That's, well, the baby is the, the cubicle and the white uh, part of it in total, yes. So she needs no more protection from the atmosphere. She's getting her first taste of space. Of space, but not the first taste of vacuum. She was tested in CSL Belgium. Uh, right, we have a story about that com coming up. First, we're used to seeing, here's a question for you, commercial satellites, 15-year lifespan, maybe more, three years for Aeolus. Why is that? Well, Aeolus is uh, one of the Earth explorers, and it's also a technology demonstrator. And because of the small size, uh, we have less fuel on board than the telco satellites have. Right. So, how much fuel, roughly? We have about 266 kilograms of fuel on board for three emission. And the other thing is geostationary satellites are geostationary. They use less fuel to stay in orbit. Now, why is that? Because they are geostationary, so they've got... Because they don't go round in the ball of yarn. Around. Exactly. Okay, very good. Another question for you. Aeolus is riding inside the Avum, that's the upper stage. What is Aeolus doing now? I ask you because... Sometimes satellites are launched on internal power, sometimes they're not on internal power. They are two schools of thought and they're, they're advantages for both sides. What's the case today? Well, for Aeolus, we are on internal power since ten, about 10 minutes before launch. Uh -huh. So we made sure that our baby is awake and uh, running its own internal pro processes. And what's the advantage to that? The advantage is that we know that the spacecraft is on. You can also switch it on in orbit through a telecommand. But then, if you miss it, it will not come on, go on. The disadvantage of what we're doing now is that you're in internal power, so you're draining the battery. You're, you're using so, some of that you, power. Exactly. Yeah, but I guess there's a case to be made for both sides. That's a, a hot debate in the uh, space industries. Uh, as I see it, Vega means, excuse my Italian, Vettore Europeo di Generazione Avanzata, or advanced generation European vehicle. The light launcher is the newest member of the Ariane family. Coming up on separation of the third stage. There you are, right on time. Confirmation from the DDO. Now what's left of the composite? On the left, the triangular bit is the avum, the triangular white bit. The gold box in the middle is what? That's the, what we call the platform. So that's basically containing all the equipment to keep the, uh, the satellite in the right orbit. And you can still see the composite on the right of your screen. And of course, the spherical, the oval white on the bottom is the telescope. The telescope, which is part of the instrument, Aladdin. Aladdin, very good. We'll have more on the instruments uh, coming up later. We ha have been picked up by our downrange uh, tracking stations. There's one here in Gallio. The next one is uh, in the Bermuda Islands, where there's a NASA station. Bermuda will be tracking the launcher from the first album ignition to its uh, cutoff on the first pass around the Earth. See, see how we're going, going north. You see the composite being spun up before the first ignition of the album. The, fir the first ignition, a long one lasting about eight minutes. There will be another one later on, a short one lasting about 20 seconds. Tell us about some of the other uh, stations. I know there's some stations far north, Norway, Sweden, and Antarctica that are going to pick up, be picking up the signal after the Bermuda 
station? Yeah, so we have one uh, telemetry station in uh, Corona, Sweden. That is where we uh, upload data uh, for the control of the spacecraft. And then we've got two ground stations in... Uh, there's the... Wh wh while you're thinking, there's the beginning of the first uh, atom uh, burn. Okay, one is in Svalbard and the other one is in Troll, and there we... Uh, download the science data from the spacecraft. The troll station in, in Antarctica will give us uh, the final uh, acquisition of the signal later on. Vega's history, briefly, it's interesting though, she grew out of an early U.S. missile called Scout, you may remember. Italy used the Scout from the 60s through the 80s and it flew 27 times. Impressive. Yeah. Launching originally from Wallops Island off Virginia, sort of on the flight path tonight, north uh, over the east coast of the U.S. Then she launched from the San Marco platform off the coast of Kenya. This was an old oil platform, if you can believe that, on the equator, like Kuru is n near the equator. In 1992, Scout production was closed down, but the project continued as an Italian venture called the San Marco Scout, led by ASI, the Italian Space Agency, and Avio. So you see, Avio has been involved since the beginning. Didio says Bermuda is picking up the signal now. Our next film, a look at Aeolus close up.